Hello everyone here, this is Pastor Eric, a pastor at the Overcomers Ministry Church in for Kingdom Without No Limit. Kingdom with No Limit. We air every Sunday at 10.30 uh, domicile. 10 30 p.m. Don't miss it after your Sunday service, after your golf tour, tour, after a good family dinner. You sit right in front of your TV and you'll be watching us. Uh, in the king, kingdom, our TV show Kingdom with No Limit, we try to bring the best word of God to your ears through the mean of the of the 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 the, the TV. All right, and, and I hope you have been blessed so far for the longest. Uh, we pray that God give us longevity, inspiration through his spirit, so we can continue doing the show as the Lord enabled us to do so. Uh, we have been talking about um, love, uh, love for the last one, two, two months. And I don't, I don't quite feel like I should change anything. I just feel like I should continue because I don't know who's watching me. You are watching me. Maybe he's going to help you. Why would I rush into some another uh, topic uh, when you are following us and enjoying what we talk about? So love is the key. Now, if you... If you, if you have some questions, don't hesitate to shoot me an email, and I'll be glad to answer you. Okay? Now, to talk about love. Last time we were talking about love, and I believe most of you guys were blessed, all right? We spoke about love in many, many, many aspects. Um, uh, love, the love of God. Um, you cannot live the right life if... If you don't feel the love of God, you cannot forgive. If you don't feel like God loves you, or you cannot, excuse me, you cannot forgive. If you don't feel like God loves you, you cannot live a right life. If you don't feel like God loves you, you cannot even um, or live a good life of grace and blessing. If you have no feeling that God loves you, and God really does love all of us, I believe me. So. Uh, Experiencing the love of God is great, uh, it's awesome, it's beautiful. A day by day, because we live in the earthly realm, we are confronted to many opposite powers that makes us believe that God does not love us. And last, uh, in our last previous shows, I was saying that uh, um, uh, so many people, uh, well, some pastors say God loves us, but how do we feel the love of God? Well. And I told you that you can feel the love of God by just obeying God. You can feel the love of God by, um, uh, by loving other people and helping other, other people by not being selfish. If you, get, if you devour yourself, you give yourself wholly to help other people, believe me, you cannot, uh, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, not feel the love of God. All right, and I told you uh, in our last show that um, as you see this cup right here, if if it ever get empty, no matter I go, no matter how much I go uh, from my mouth to the table, from my mouth to the table, if the cup is empty, I can never be full. So nobody can drink off of empty cup. Okay, so if you are empty of love. Uh, excuse me, but nobody can get anything out of you. And whatever we can get is all bitterness. We can never stop talking about love. We can talk about love uh, nonstop. It's, it's, just, it's just a lot, a lot. But we're going to continue in this series, and I pray that God visit us and continue talking to us. All right? I told you also that to try to experience God's love without obeying God is to try to drink uh, water from an empty cup. To kill your thirst, all right. Uh, I demonstrated. I I gave I gave about thirteen characteristics of God's love. Uh, God's love is everlasting. God's love is unconditional. God's love is renewed every morning. God's love is compassion. God's love is mercy. God's love is forgive forgiving love. God's love is protective. God's love is jealousy. God's love is provision. God's love is glory. God's love is uh, limitless. God's love is covenant. God's love is God love everybody. 
and he was now something uh, 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 preaching that I was blessed myself. Now, at the church at the moment, we are talking about marriage. We are talking about uh, marriage, which has something to do with love, not so much, but you know, in the confusing mind of everybody, we confuse marriage and love, which is not really true, right? It is not really true. So, in the next shows, once we get we get we expire our study series on on love and the double swing door, all right. Once we get that done, we will really, really, really gonna focus on uh, our marriage. Ah, I love the topic of marriage. It's going to be awesome. Don't miss it. We're gonna talk about some real stuff. Uh, most of the reason why marriage failed is because we don't know each other. Uh, Sometimes we started with love and it turned to hate, hatred, you know, and hatred doesn't come all of the sudden. It piles up, it builds up, it builds up, problem after problem, problem issues after issues, problem after problem. And then after that, then we get to messed up, you know. So, uh, uh, it just things that happen and, and we just do with it, you know, and we all, let God lead our life and we all let God do whatever he wants to do whenever we are married. Now, here is the thing. Uh, there is a dynamic between curse, blessing, and love. So today we are going to find a synergy between curse, blessing, and love. If we don't finish it during this show, we're going to continue on the other shows, all right, uh, to another time. But it's very, very critical that we talk about it, we talk about the dynamic of curse, blessing, and love. I'm going to get to explain something. How does God perceive cursing? And how does God perceive love, which we already talked about it? And how does it affect your life with your blessing? Okay? Now, for those that know me, I don't bring it study state without telling you why. All right? Now, my goal as I speak about love is to make you understand what is love, to make you understand that God is love, to make you understand that you were created in love. Uh, number four, to make you understand that God loves you and God has been loving you and God will always love you. To, number five, to make you understand that love is power. All right, love is power and love is powerful. Number six, to make you understand that love is energy. Number seven, I want to make you understand that love is an expression of the soul. Number eight, I want to tell you that love can be communicated. All right. Number nine, I also want to tell you that love has a language and love is a language. Love has a language and love is a number ten. Love can heal when it's received. Love can heal when it's received. As repeat, love can heal when it's received, not when it is given. Okay? Love can heal when it is received. And love can, can not when it is given. There is a difference between giving and receiving. The person that the person that I give should receive a certain joy when he gives. And the person that receives should receive a certain type of joy when he receives something that is given. We talked about this in our previous shows. And if you don't kind of like catch it, you can still go to YouTube and you know on the TV channel on the on the TV station channel and you find most of the teaching there. So you can learn to receive love. Number eleven, if you are going to see the power of God flowing through you, you need to love like God. If you are going to see things moving with ease, like God moves, you need to understand love. All right. You will need to understand love. Most people you see act in a certain way. All they want is love that they need and they want. If you ever see someone that is acting a certain way, someone that is moody, someone that is uh, grumpy, frowny, grouchy, look, the problem is not even money. I tell you that right now. The problem is just love. They want to receive love in a certain way. They probably want you to ask, are you okay? You want to talk about something? They want care. Loving is caring. Caring is loving. They want to share your time. They want to, I mean, if you ever see, whenever you see someone acting a certain way, or all that they're looking for, it's just love. They just want love. 
They just want love. They just want to be loved. That's all. All right? You got to understand that. And the deficit of love into someone's life can make him or make her act strangely. Okay? So we got to understand that very clearly. So certain part of the... Um, oh, no, watch this. Some people... Some people inability to receive love shouldn't stop you from giving love. Okay? Whenever you're trying to show love to someone and he's not receiving it, it should not stop you from giving love. Okay? Uh, what uh, a, a friend of mine put a post on the social media one day he says, the wickedness of people can turn you, turn, turn you into wickedness. The Bible teaches that offense will come. Offenses will come. You will be offended. One way or the other, you will be offended. However, 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 you need to be healed of your offense. Otherwise, you are going to become a monster. All right? So I want to speak to you. Anyone watching me under this anointing, you have been offended. Maybe this offense was to make you a better person. But you still have not been healed. I pray that you get healing today in Jesus' name because if you are not healed, if you are not healed, you are going to damage yourself emotionally. You are going to be emotionally hurt. All right? So, so many people, so, your, so people in ability to, to, <clears throat> to receive love, uh, okay, to receive your love should not stop from loving them. People in ability to recognize your love should not stop you from loving them because there is something love does even when it's not received. All right? There is something, if I give something, even if it's not received, the giving of love is still a power. It still has power. So even if I show love to someone and I give love to someone and they still don't receive, now, thank you, Holy Spirit. I got to tell you this. Uh, when, uh, when, last year when we were starting this study series, I had to make a correction, all right? When, when I brought the study series, I had to make a big correction. And the correction I brought was that some people manipulate other people thinking that they're giving love, but what they really want is their own interest. That is not love. That is evil, cunning business, all right? For instance, I can go to, if, if let's say I'm not married, or let's say I, I go back to the time where I was courting my wife, or maybe, um, not even that. Oh, let's say a random person, Mr. E, Mr. X, and Sister Y, right? And this man will come to her and say, if you love me, go ahead and steal money and give it to me. If you love me, buy me some drink. If you love me, give me this and that. Well, that is manipulation. That is not love. That is manipulation. The goal of love, love aim for the betterment of one. Okay, one person's betterment, one person's self-improvement, and one person's deep self-feeling. Love things to make people better, not bitter. All right? So if I come and I put people in a certain condition where I say, if you say you love me, why are you, why are you not doing this for me? I am imposing a condition in what way they should love me. Okay, and this is can this can be a little manipulative, but we got to be very careful and create a, you know remove the shadow of doubt about 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 this way of manipulating people. Okay, don't manipulate people; it's not good. Some people need love, and but the way they act, the way they act deprive of the people from joy. All right, the way they act deprive of the people from living a good life. That is manipulation, and the sister name for manipulation is witchcraft, okay? All right, so you got to understand this. So there's something love does even when it's not received. When someone is not receiving love, there's something. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse 13, it says, If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. Now, peace, I'm, uh, instead of peace, I'm saying love. I'm using this scripture as a parallel study, but when, whenever the Bible says peace, remove that peace, right? In this scripture specifically, remove peace and put love. So in the household, if the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. 
All right? So if someone wants what I have to offer, all right, love, they must receive it. If they do not want to receive it, then it come back to me. So that means by the law of giving and receiving, if I want to give something and it's not received, guess what? It's going to come back to me. Now watch this. Here's the dynamic, okay? Here's the dynamic. Watch this. Love being a person, love being a spirit, love being an energy, okay? And when the energy is not received, it comes back to the creator. So now watch this. Whenever someone wants to show you enough love, whenever someone wants to show you enough care, whenever someone wants to show you a lot of, a lot of, uh, of, of uh, what you call, a lot of uh, connection, a lot of <clears throat> care, and you are not receiving it, guess what happened? Watch, watch what happened. Spiritually, spiritually, love being a person, this person here, is receiving love or must receive love or should have received love from this one person. But this one person is repelling everyone that's trying to love them. They care and all this. They don't read it right because they don't understand the language of love. Now what they have done is they have commanded all element of the universe, right, to receive, to, to refuse them love. So whenever I repel love, whenever I reject love, whenever I reject caring, Love coming from your children, your wife, your husband, people, whenever I reject it because of whether I'm hurt or not, what happens is in the realm of the universe or in the realm of the spirit, uh, anything that's supposed to come to you because of love is rejected. Now, let me give you an example. You go to the restaurant in a bad mood, you sit down, and the waitress serves you uh, something you don't like, okay? You reject the food. But believe me, because you have started being grumpy and frowning and start talking about how things were bad and all this, the rest of your day will some way, somehow become also bad. Now, my five-year-old daughter came to me not too long ago and said, Dad, do not let anger take away your joy. I said, what? How did you learn that? Who taught you that? She said, well, I learned it by myself. Do not let anger take away your joy because as soon as you welcome anger in your spirit everything about you connected to the same energy and the same frequency in which you are and positive stuff is rejected repelled and now you are attracting evil around you you are attracting more anger you are attracting more problem so once you reject love the whole universe people man look Whenever you wake up in the morning and you don't realize that God loves you, you, don't, you complain about how gloomy and cloudy and snowy it is, right? What happens is you, your day continues on by a series of complaints, a whole lot of series of complaints. And the more you complain, the more problem comes around you so you can complain about. And nothing ever gets better. So you got to understand this. He that do not receive love, he that do not receive love is repelling love. And the more you repel love, the less love you get. So if you're sitting there and you are watching me and you're telling yourself, or you're telling me or you're telling everybody, I don't feel like people love me and my life has always been like that, where I feel like nobody ever really loved me, guess what you are doing? You are repelling love and that which you say is what you're going to leave. People, my Lord. That's probably why God is putting my heart to keep emphasizing on love. And I'm going to continue on this. I'm going to keep talking about love. Whether it takes me the whole year, it's okay. As long as one person out there is blessed. Okay? Now, let me bring you some notes on love that are different from what I said before. Someone asked me one day, Pastor, what is love? I keep getting this question. What is love? What is, what is your personal definition of, of love? All right? I keep, uh, what, how do I personally define love? Now, there are many types of loves. Okay? There is, the Greek society defines love in many aspects. Okay? But my personal definition of love is like this. Ready? My personal definition goes like this. Love is beyond feeling. Love is beyond what I feel. A good treatment and caring and sharing stuff together. Love is beyond that. 
Gift giving, okay, giving gift. Love is beyond that. For me, love is personal self-care. For me, love is a personal self-care, self-peace, self-esteem, self-value, self-intimacy, self-harmony, and self-balance, self-respect, self-affection, within yourself, producing a feeling of completeness and gratitude and truth that can be communicated with other people at equal or higher quantity. I repeat, that's for me. I sat down by the Spirit, I redefined love, that's for me, okay? I define love as love is beyond feeling, love is beyond treatment, good treatment, love is beyond caring, love is beyond sharing stuff together, love is beyond giving a gift, for me, love is a personal self-care, a personal self, a self-peace, a self-esteem, a self-value, a high, a good self-value. You know, in all in all these adjectives, self, a, a good self-intimacy, self-harmony, self-balance, self-respect, self-affection, uh, within yourself, producing a feeling of completeness and gratitude of tr and true and truth that can be communicated with other people at equal or higher quantity this is how pastor eric defined love what am i trying to say what i'm trying to say is my definition of love start off not toward what you give to other people but what you do within yourself Okay, so the perfect love, which is the agape love, it is the kind of love that, that God shows to humanity. It's also the kind of love that you give to you oneself, yourself. It's a retrospective kind of love. And that same kind of retrospective love is also given to one else. So it's our love from God to us, from us to God, from us to us uh, to ourselves, and from ourselves to someone else. And from someone else to us, it's a triangular type of love. Are we listening to me? So that's how I define love. So in order for you to understand love, you have got to love yourself. And today, a few people love themselves. All right? Now, that's why God made a helper. Your helper has eyes to see you where your eyes can never see yourself. You have an idea of how you look like. But the person you marry had a 100% idea of how you look like. I have no idea how my back look like. Okay? I've looked at it in a mirror. And what if there were no mirror? However, the one I marry knows how my back look like so they can recognize me walking from, walk, uh, from the back, walking away from them. All right? So, my second definition of love is Love is a power that gives you the sentiment. Now I'm speaking about sentiment and feeling. Love is a power that gives you the sentiment and feeling of God toward humanity. What am I trying to say? Whenever you have love, you have the same feeling as God has toward other humans. So if I have love, I'm going to start feeling just as God feels toward us. Or humanity in general. Now, let me tell you something for your Christian and religious people out there. Jesus Christ did not die for your Christian. Didn't that, Jesus Christ didn't die for your church and your congregation. The death of Jesus Christ is a, is a very, is a clean, very pure, clean manifestation of what is true love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one son. The world is not only the saints. The world is every sinner's out. I should actually say the whole universe. All right? So once you understand how love works, you will never fall into the trap of unforgiveness, or grouchiness, and self-destruction. If you love yourself, you're not going to self-destruct yourself. If you observe most people that, fall, that fail in life, destroyed, all right, you will see that love is the issue. People that fail in life and destroyed, and they are destroyed. You come to understand that love is the issue. The reason why is that they are taught, they are brought so low. Why? 
Because love never fails. The Bible teaches us love never fails. So if we fail in life, it's usually because we don't have love. All right? If we, are, if, we, if we have an issue with love and we fail to give love, it's because we don't know what love is. All right? So love is not condoning or being passive about bad situation. Now let me tell you something. Love has nothing to do with condoning what other people do. For example, I get to get I get this question all the time. Pastor, what do you do with repeated offenders? You show them love, they keep hurting you. You show them love, they keep hurting you. You're going to get to love them, but you're probably going to have to love them in a very different way. Mm, that is powerful. You're going to keep loving them, but you are going to love them in a very different way. That is, you are going to love them in such a way for the betterment. I need to come back to this. So love is not being stupid. Now, just because I love you doesn't mean I'm stupid. Just because I love you doesn't mean I'm weak, okay? Because some people show a very hard front, a very tough a space, face, a very tough character. They're trying to put a wall, not boundaries, a wall, uh, between them and other people, I don't know for what, because they have been hurt, none. When you love people, it doesn't mean you are a weak person. When you love people, it doesn't mean you call down what they did. All right? Because once you start loving, people think that you are too nice or too passive. They can do anything they feel like they want to do. Oh, yes, I've seen that. I've seen it many times, even in my own life. Because I kind of tend to love sometimes beyond my own capacity, right? Some people think that I'm, I'm, I'm too weak or I'm too passive or I'm too, I let go of things. I condone evil. People of God, just because you love someone that hurt you many times doesn't mean you are weak. Matter of fact, you are stronger than them. And, and I want to address this to many people watching me here, all right? Because you love people and you have been a victim of your love, doesn't make you a weak person. It does not make you a stupid person. It does not make you uh, whatever name that could be. It makes you a, a great person that it is just like his creator, God. Well, God bless you, his creator, God. Well, God bless you, Pastor Eric here. I'm always happy, but because of time, we're going to have to stop here. If you're looking for my address, I'm on 2850 North 81st Street, Omar, Nebraska. Uh, if you have questions about love and all this, and you're going through some stuff on top of being a pastor, I'm a life coach. I can get to talk to you personally or in a Zoom, but send me an email, and I'll be glad to answer you. God bless you. You take care of yourself. I'll see you to the next show. Bye-bye.